Morning. It's Sunday, December 25th, Christmas Day. And the other day, the nation received a gigantic Christmas present. Congress and the Senate passed a $1.7 trillion spending that is supposed to do wonderful things for this country. But I'm not sure it's going to do wonderful things in every place that it's needed to do. But in any event, let me give you some idea of what we're going to do with all this money. $1.7 trillion. That's an astounding number. But I am willing to bet you that there are many pieces of it that people don't really understand or don't care about. And then there are those groups that are not being properly funded. Like I said before, the IRS surely did not get their fair share of the money. And they should get money because they are responsible for raising money for this country. You know, without the IRS, we're not going to collect the proper amount of taxes from everybody. And as we've seen before, that's happening in the 1% community. But let me get on with the rest of this bill. This bill contains significant amounts of money for increases to national security and domestic spending. And then we are giving billions of dollars to aid the Ukraine. There's $858 billion in funds for the military. And that's the number that the Republicans wanted. So they got their number. And there's more than $772 billion for education, health, and veterans programs that the Democrats have fought for. So it looks like it was almost a 50-50 split in this bill as to how the money was going to be spent. And this thing is done just before Christmas Eve because these guys got to get away. They got to get away for their Christmas break, you know. And after the Christmas break, Congress is going to be an entirely different place because it will have a Republican majority. And as we look forward because of that Republican majority and the fact that the J6 committee finished its work on Friday or so and gave out their reports and their recommendations, which included a recommendation of criminal accounts against our former president. But it's expected that when Congress takes over in January, when the Republicans control the House, a lot of what was done by the Democrats will disappear. We'll just have to wait and see how far the new Congress can go and get. And don't forget, they have a congressman right now who is in deep shit. That's George Santos, who lied, just as Herschel Walker lied. And he's about to defend himself. He's supposed to come forward and say exactly what happened. Because he's claiming he worked for Citigroup and Goldman Sachs. And those are reputable organizations. I trust them. But in any event, he's claiming... That their, that their records are screwed up. At least that's the latest report that I got. So we're waiting to see what Santos is liable to tell us. So as I said before, the vote came out in favor of the bill, and the Republicans seem to get what they want, and the Democrats seem to get what they want. Yet the count, the final count, was only 225 to 201, with one lawmaker voting present. That doesn't make any sense to me. If each party got everything they wanted, why there wasn't an almost unanimous vote? I mean, this was a pretty close vote, even though it passed. There were still people that were unhappy with this bill. And probably for a variety of reasons. Maybe because one particular county didn't get the money they needed to build something or something. These bills are extremely complicated. And let us not forget that within this structure, there's a lot of uh, campaign funding money that goes into these votes. 
you got to understand that the congressmen don't vote necessarily on what's really good for the country. They vote a lot of times on what's really good for them and their constituents. And a lot of times the constituents don't really matter. It's what's really good for them and their donors. So I don't know if this bill would have come out differently if there had been a lot of campaign funding against it in some way, shape, or form. Let's remember that congressmen and senators are driven by campaign funding as much as by anything else. I am sure that doing right by the country is a secondary consideration in most of their minds. And another thing you had to consider in this situation, if this bill had not been passed, then the country would have shut down. So think about that. The country could be shut down if this bill is not passed. And even though that situation was hanging over Congress's head, we still had 201 people voting against this bill. So what does that tell you? That tells you that there are a lot of people in Congress who really don't give a shit about this country in the way it should be, right? Maybe there's one or two items in there that you don't agree with, but we need to compromise. We needed this bill to pass. We could not afford a shutdown. But still, 201 congressmen would have been okay. Or maybe they were fighting for one little thing in the bill that they didn't like. Is that one little thing worth taking the chance on shutting down the country. Or those 201 knew they were going to lose anyhow, so they just voted their conscience. Wouldn't it have been nice to see a huge output of congressmen going in favor of this bill, even though it was a lot of money, right? It would have been nice to see three quarters of Congress voting for this bill instead of 51% or 52%. And so there's no question that Joe's going to sign this bill. And he should just say thanks to Congress for doing this thing instead of saying something like he did. It's a great effort that we have accomplished here with this bipartisan working of Congress to get this thing done. I wouldn't call this a great bipartisan effort when the vote is like 52 to 48. That is not a great bipartisan vote in my mind. In my mind, a great partisan vote would be 75% or 80% for the bill. So Joe has another two tough years that he's going to have to deal with when Congress turns over in January. Because I am sure this bipartisan group is going to disappear again. And we're going to have nothing but bullshit for the next two years. So we should be happy that we got this spending bill in and that the government's not shutting down. But if we look closely at the numbers and everything, we shouldn't be too happy. Because we haven't come close to getting to back to being a bipartisan country where people vote, vote their conscience, but vote correctly. And I don't mean they have to agree with me all the time, but I believe that they can't vote the straight party line every single time. That is not bipartisan politics. So in any event, I leave you with that this morning, and have a great Christmas day. Bye. 